Seven years ago, LEGO released the original 18 plus Disney castle with just over 4,000 pieces for $350. And in just a couple of weeks, LEGO will release a new version with 4,800 pieces using the most up-to-date building techniques and pieces. Does new equal better? What cool features, pieces, and techniques are in this new set? And is it worth 400 bucks? Well, let's break it down. There are 800 more pieces in this version of the Disney castle than the original. Changing up the building techniques is a main reason for this. One huge difference is in the tower construction. The original uses wedge slopes to build the round towers. The new one uses more bow slopes, which results in a much sleeker look. Note how the designers taper the walls at the towers a bit and use what looks like to be printed one by three tiles in light blade for the arrow slits. At the top of the tower, we have curved slope pieces, which have been introduced since the original castle was released, and that again helps make the design a bit sleeker. Second, using fewer wall panels means using more bricks, and that adds to the cost. Now, the wall panels are still used in some places, but the towers are brick built. A good example of this is the wall on the right middle exterior. There are a lot of profile bricks and cheese slopes for the turret. The new set really does have, I think, some real Lion Knight's Castle vibes to it, particularly in how it makes use of the profile bricks. And honestly, I prefer this castle and how it builds the towers and the walls to the old version. Another reason the piece count is higher here is that, well, it's wider. The old one runs about 58 studs across. This one is around 66 studs wide, which is bigger than two modular buildings put together. The key addition here is the diamond shaped tower on the far left of this image. There's a bit more room for landscaping on the sides of the new one as well. You'll note that they have the green rounded bricks in this new one, as opposed to the dark blay in the old one. Again, I think we have an upgrade here. We see additional detailing around the main entrance. There is so much going on in this set, but notice the dark blue curtain in front of the doors placed at an angle using the one by two plate with a bar attached to a clip. And instead of using arches flipped on their side for the main archway, as in the original, this one uses four by four macaroni tiles. Now I'm not sure one entrance design is better than the other, but I do like the update nonetheless. In terms of building techniques, I'm a bit torn between the two. One of my favorite aspects of the original set was the columns in the back along with the angled tile floor. The older columns were bulkier at their base, which made for a more interesting building experience, but also took up more floor space. The new ones are much narrower and allows for more room to work with minifigs. I have to say though, I'm not a fan of the new floor at the entryway, which focuses on the ballroom dancing play feature. After that, the cool steps that I liked in the back of the old one are gone. They're removed so they can use this aforementioned play feature. However, note the dark blue banners hanging along the back side, as opposed to just a long, flat, tan wall. A second huge difference between the two sets is the color scheme. This set uses a large amount of gold pieces. Check out the facade on this one compared to the original. Almost all of the original white is replaced with gold pieces. It certainly creates a more fanciful look to the set. And speaking of gold, we're getting some great pieces in this color, such as a ton of one by one plates, one by two plates, candles, one by one cones, one by two by one panels with two sides, two by two wedge slopes, which have only appeared in two sets previously, and mud guards, which are brand new to this set, the one by one by five brick columns, again, brand new, and a bunch of 
pearl gold windows that have only appeared in the Ninjago City markets. Then there are those gorgeous 4x4 macaroni tiles. Note though that the replacement of white pieces with gold makes the set a little bit darker. So to offset this, they use regular blue roofs instead of the dark blue variety that they used in the original. This brightens the look overall, and I think it's more accurate to the source material, as, by the way, is the inclusion of this diamond-shaped tower. They also use sand blue for the exterior instead of dark blue. The combination of sand blue, light blue, metallic gold, pearl gold, and blue are fantastic on this bottom facade, and I think are, again, an upgrade over the original, especially when placed atop the green bricks and azure plates instead of just a solid base of dark blue. Speaking of sand blue, like the gold pieces, this is an incredible parts pack. New in this color are the 1x6x5 panels, profile bricks of which there are at least 100, and 1x2 plates modified with handles. Plus, there are a lot of 1x1, 1x4, and 1x6 bricks along with other pieces in sand blue. This, in fact, might be the largest collection of sand blue in any prior LEGO set. And then there's the light nougat pieces. If you don't have the Boutique Hotel Modular or the Harry and Hermione buildable figures, you probably don't have a lot of pieces in this color. So what are we getting here in this set? Well, we're getting a bunch of one by one bricks, one by two bricks, one by four bricks, one by six mud guards, one by one plates, one by two plates, one by two modified plates with a clip in the middle, cheese slopes, and even headlight bricks. Most of these pieces have appeared in only a handful of sets in this color to date. Plus, we get new pieces in this color, including the 1x2 profile brick, the 1x2x5 column brick, and the corner wall panel. Whew, okay, you got all of that? Because that's a lot of really great pieces in rare colors in this set. The bottom line is that this set packs a punch in terms of its piece selection, and even though they still intersperse that dark tan with the gold that I'm not a big fan of, they can't accuse LEGO of cutting corners in terms of color selection in this set. In terms of display, this set is instantly recognizable and absolutely display worthy. The added fireworks shooting out of the towers only adds to its look. However, it does take up a lot of space, both in terms of width and height. While the interior is not fully on display when the set is placed on a shelf, the details here add to the ambiance of the set. I think people are going to want to see what's going on on the inside when they see this on display. The entry interior, for instance, has some strong artwork that I'm guessing are stickers based on what I saw on the Rivendell set, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I can't really tell based on the photos. The new set also, I think, breaks some new grounds in its mini builds and Easter eggs. We can see this in the more simplified construction of Lumiere, the more elaborate magic mirror, the sword and the stone, as well as the artwork and ore that pay homage to Moana. Rapunzel also gets more interior space here than the black tuft of hair she got in the first castle, and Tiana gets a much larger presence than in the first set. Not only does the set come with Rapunzel and Tiana, but the artwork shows Tiana here on the first level. In my opinion though, the arrangement of the Easter eggs and the interior details is better in the original set. For instance, we had Lumiere and the Rose in the same room in the old one, but now the Rose is paired with the Genie lamp from Aladdin and the Moana gear, while Lumiere is stuck in the Diamond Tower. That said, I liked the open space we have at the main level, expanding the base by a dozen or so studs and making the columns narrower works very well. This set definitely breaks new ground with the minifigs. 
Whereas the first one focused on Mickey and Minnie and company, this one is dominated by princes and princesses. We get Snow White, Rapunzel, and Cinderella for the first time ever, as best as I can tell, plus a new version of Tiana, because the dress printing looks a little different from that found in the collectible minifig version. Flynn Rider makes his own minifig debut, as does Prince Charming, Prince Naveen, and Prince Florian. If you like new minifigs that are highly collectible and relevant to pop culture, this is a great set for you. There are many reasons to buy this set, if you have the money. It matches the source material well. In fact, I think better than the original. It looks great on display, it contains a fantastic array of pieces, comes with unique minifigs, and is a fair price for what you get. Oh, and it's Disney, which I know a lot of people love. But there are three reasons I am not buying the set. First, and most importantly, I have the original. And while this set is better, it's an upgrade, it's not enough of one to warrant spending $400 on it. Second, while it's a nice castle, I actually prefer the Lion Knight's castle over this, especially since I have the original Disney castle. The Lion Knight's castle I think is more original, it's incredibly well built, has a fantastic building experience and techniques, and it has more minifigs. And while the new Disney castle has about 300 more pieces than the Lion Knight's castle, the trade-off in minifigs and animals is more than worth it. So if you're in the market to spend $400 on a Lego castle, I would recommend the Lion Knight's castle over this one. Again, acknowledging that many people are huge Disney fans and that's the big draw here. Third, it doesn't fit into our summer Lego budget. We spent a lot of money in June on the Ninjago City Markets and two copies of the Botanical Gardens and even another friend set. So we're saving our money right now for some fall sets at this moment. So there you have it, my detailed breakdown of the soon to be released Disney Castle. Check out this video here to see some of our other content. Thanks for watching and always remember to keep building together.